put into 2024. And Lord, we just expect you to do great and mighty things, Lord, in Jesus' name. So, Father, we just ask that you be with us tonight, that you watch over us, that you protect us, oh God. Even in this inclement weather, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. And we thank you that this is the day that you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it, Lord. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We give God praise, glory, and honor. Well, happy Saturday. Of course, now it's snowing. <laughs> It wasn't bad when I was getting ready, but it's snowing now, so we're not going to be before you long, so those that are here can get back home safe and sound. Can somebody say safe and sound? Safe and sound. Amen. Uh, our thought for tonight is, I'm just going to kind of just uh, share a little bit tonight, uh, just to kind of wet your whistle and to kind of steer us in the right direction. But for, the, uh, for this year of 2024, the Lord gave me seeking the Lord, seeking God, seeking God the more in 2024 and I believe that whatever we will face or whatever we go through this year as we seek the face of God as we put God first he will grace us and help us to go through everything amen, amen. so that's our theme seeking God the more in 2024 and our scripture reference is taken from Isaiah 55 and 6 it says seek ye the Lord while he may be found call ye upon him while he is near I'm going to read it one more time. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. So we as believers, we want to be men and women that are seeking the face of God. Amen. Seeking the face of God. And that's the only way we're going to really make it in this year of 2024 is that we have to put God first and keep him first. Another familiar passage of scripture says in Matthew 6, 33, to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and that everything else will be added unto us. Amen? So I want to give you the definition of seek. Seeking God, seeking God, seeking God. Uh, it means to come, coming to him fully through the way Jesus made on the cross and being filled by the Holy Spirit, which allows us the capacity to experience and understand God on a supernatural level. Amen. And as we seek God tomorrow, we want to come to him fully. We want to come to him completely. Amen. Amen. Uh, how do I seek the Lord? I'm just going to give you some ways that we seek the Lord. A few ways that we seek the Lord, which are very familiar. Number one, we seek the Lord when we pray. Amen. We seek the Lord when we pray. We have to continue to be men and women that pray. The Bible says men are always to pray and not to faint, lose heart, and give up. So we want to, you know, and I don't want to say that uh, religiously or, or, you know, even with, I was sharing with someone this week about the year of 2024. And, you know, a lot of times people have a lot of 2024 hype. You know, oh, this, oh, this is my year, blah, 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 blah. Or they start off something, they start eating right, and then by the third week they're back to their old eating habits. Or they exercise and they go back to the gym, and then by the third week they forgot the date the, how to get to the gym. Right. So we don't, I want us to be, as, as we go through this month, and as we go through the, the teaching this month, I want us to think bigger than the hype. Amen. Especially as believers. Uh, we want to think Amen. bigger and wider than the hype. Amen. Because it's so easy, even for Christians, to get into a hype. That's but we don't want to get into a hype. We want to really we want to settle yeah. ourselves and really uh, see what God is saying to us. Uh, focus on what God wants for us to do Amen. this year. Uh, and, and really stay focused. We we a lot of it's so easy for people to get in Christian Christian hype. That's really good. Amen. Yeah, Christian hype. Right. Just uh, or, right. or, or or the the um right the thing that ha the thing that's really going on in Christendom or whatever's okay. going on the trendy thing or whatever's trending on yep. Instagram or whatever's yep. trending on Facebook. Yep. And we don't want to get caught up in trends and we don't want to get caught up in. Uh, 2024 hype Same and cliches. Same. We want to balance ourselves and really balance. press into the God of press into God the more in 2024. So that's why I said seeking God the more in 2024. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So number one, how do we seek the Lord? We seek Him when we pray, and the Bible says men are always to pray and not to faint, to lose heart, and give up. Uh, whatever you may may need or seeking uh, an answer for. Uh, we want to seek God for whatever, you know, because Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart 
Lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So as we're starting off the new year, uh, where, what areas do I need to seek the Lord in? What areas, um, I have a few things, I have about 10 things that I'm just going to kind of skim over tonight. But as we seek in the Lord in this year, uh, number one, we want to seek God for our future. Yes. A job, yes. business, ministry. Yes. What is God saying for me in 2024? Maybe it's time to take a leap of faith. Maybe it's time to start a business. Maybe it's time to step out of your comfort zone. Maybe your job is getting ready to close up. You know, whatever the case may be, we need to seek the Lord and see what God would have for us for our future, That's our true. job, our right. business, our That's ministry. Right. And, and, and ministry is really big because ministry, sometimes we can put more emphasis on a job than we do in what God has really placed us here to do. Right. Let me say that for those in the back yep, there. We can we can dedicate and commit so much time to our jobs, eight plus hours, right. work overtime, uh, just really get caught up in the job where we're so tired by the time we get off a job, we don't really have no time for God. Talk by the time we do what we got to do, it's like, you know. So I, I, want it, I want it to be where we're really uh, putting whatever God has called us to do, priority, making it, making it the first thing, even if it's, like Christine, you might focusing on her children or focusing on her son, uh -huh. whatever that is. Everybody, God has a uh, place in people's hearts to do different things. Uh -huh. You know, some, and then sometimes your your goals change or your focus change. God may yeah. say, okay, during this season, just focus on your daughter. You know, pour into uh -huh. her, yep. speak into her, yep. get her where she needs to go in the next phase. And then like when she That's gets good. where God would have her to be, then he'll give you a different assignment. So what yeah. is your assignment? What is God calling you to do? Maybe he will lead you in a quiet time where it's just a quiet time for you to pray and draw closer to the Lord. Maybe it's not time for you to do, to do quote unquote anything, but maybe you need to just stay before the Lord. Uh, maybe he wants to heal your heart. Maybe he wants to heal your body. Maybe he wants to just some me and you, some you and God time, some one on one time with God. Amen. Amen. So we have to see what God is saying to us in uh -huh. this time and in this season. Uh -huh. Amen. So number one, as we seek God, we want to seek him for our future job, business, ministry. Uh, number two, seek him, seek him in our health. What could we do to be healthier? What could we eat better? What could we exercise better? What can we, you know, what can we do? Uh, and when I say health, I'm not just speaking physical health, but maybe unhealthy relationships, unhealthy friendships, uh, things that are really not really, you know, you're maybe in fellowship with somebody, but it's not really healthy for you. Or it's not God's best for you. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all quiet well, tonight. You're talking right. Number three, seeking for decisions in your life. The decisions of your life. What should you be doing? We want to be, we want to be where God would have us to be. And the only way to know what, what way He's navigating us is by seeking His face. Amen. Uh, life decisions. Thinking for your future. Uh -huh. Thinking what God may have for you to do. Uh, pressing into the more of God. Pressing into the more of God for your family. Maybe he might highlight somebody in your family to really pray for or, or to intercede for or to, to love on or to spend time with. Amen. Amen. Number four, you may seek him for yourself. Seek him for yourself or your family, your spouse, your children, your relatives. You know, what would he highlight for, for you to do? Uh, I know there's a few people that God has just, you know, told me to intercede and to pray for. Just on the side, maybe someone... Maybe someone that needs you to be their gatekeeper or their intercessor, and they, might, they don't even have to ask you to do it, but God will place it on your heart. You know, keep this one in prayer. Keep this one before the Lord. Keep praying for them. You know, pray for them morning, noon, and night. You know, as soon as he speaks, he may give you a name to, to, to pray for them until things lift off of their life or to, until things change for them. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's really good. You know, seek him for yourself, your family, your spouse your children, your relatives. Amen. Sometimes uh, there may be something God may lead you to say to them. Maybe God is dealing with you and telling you, you know, you need to, you know, maybe say something to your children or uh, he may highlight something in their life and you may see something and God may have you, he may either have you address it or he may either have you just pray for it or he may just have you love on them. He just may have you give them a scripture, whatever that looks like, whatever that is. So as we're seeking God, Allow God seek. Allow God to uh, lead you and guide you as to what He would have you to do for them. Amen. Amen. Uh, I put here moving. <laughs> maybe somebody wants to move. Maybe maybe you're going to move out of a out, out of a house or out of state 
or to a better place, peaceful surroundings, moving. Maybe he wants you to maybe do some things uh, that will cause you to move and to be better and to do better and to reach more people. You know what I'm saying? It could be moving in location or whatever that, whatever that looks like. Somebody say moving. Moving. Moving forward, moving past some drama, moving past some things, moving past some hurts. Amen? Or it could be a physical location of moving. Amen. Yeah, amen. I want to move. I, you know. Well, you're miserable. Maybe you're so miserable, it's time to do something. Amen. You're so miserable. You know what I'm saying? Amen. You're like, oh, I don't know why I'm so miserable. Uh, God's saying it's time to move. It's time to go. It's time to do something different. Let's give God a hand of praise. Amen. Amen. It may be moving from a comfortable place on a job. Or maybe you're in one place and God said, you know what, I want to, I want to bless you with a house. Or maybe you're in a house and God may say, well, I want you to downsize. I want you to, 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 to minimize. I want you to come up out of, from all this pressure, all this financial pressure. Come out. You know, God leads us to shift sometimes. He leads us to change, to change. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we don't, we don't have so much pressure. And I just believe, and I, I've said it before, I just believe as we all get older, that we should live, uh, live where you're, it's more peaceful. Oh yeah. Stop having so much stress on you. Mm -hmm. Stop buying everything your little beady eyes see on Amazon. <laughs> Stop you yeah. know buying stuff and you can't even you got the stuff falling out the clock. You know, just kind of minimalize, minimalize your life and just yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. I'm not yeah. saying penny pinch or whatever. That may be good for some, but I'm just saying mm -hmm. live in a place where you're comfortable. Live in a place where you don't have so much overhead. Live in a place where you can, you know, enjoy yourself. Even if you're home, you want to enjoy yourself. I enjoy myself when I'm home. Yeah, Amen. I do. I, I love when I'm home. I like being home. I like it's peaceful. It's quiet. It's nice. Yeah. You know, so just your, your haven. When you go home, yep. that should be your safe place. Amen. Amen. Some people, honestly speaking, it's sad to say, but I'm going to say yeah. it. Some people work hard every day. They work hard, they contribute, and a lot of people dread going home. Yep. That's, right. I, 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 in Jesus' name, I'm not living like Amen. that. Amen. I mean, you work hard every day, you hustle, you bustle, you pay bills, you go to a job you don't really want to go to, <laughs> and then you go home and you're miserable. That's not life. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, I have come that you would have life and have it more abundantly to the full until it overflows. If you can't be peaceful and happy at home, where can you be peaceful Amen. at? Amen. That. So that's what I'm saying. Moving sometimes we have to move out of our comfort zone. Sometimes we, you know, we have to just make make some moves and make some changes. Mm -hmm. And if God leads you to make some changes, He only leads us into better. Mm -hmm. He leads oh, us yeah. beside still waters. Yep. He yep. restores our soul. Yes. Glory to God. Even if you know what, even if you have to start all over again, you like maybe you don't have nothing but a, a blow up mattress, whatever, a blow up mattress and a blanket. But that's okay if you're peaceful. Amen. Because <laughs> things and stuff don't make you happy. You can always get you can always get things and stuff. You got people that have a lot of things. You have people that have a lot of stuff. You have people that have a lot of money. They can charge anything. They can buy anything. And you know what? There's some miserable people oh, still out there. They're still miserable. Amen. Judette. Because it's not the things and stuff that makes you happy. Only Jesus satisfies. Amen. Amen. Whether you have a husband, whether you have a wife, whether you have a boo, whether you have nobody, only Jesus will satisfy your soul. And when you come to a place where you're satisfied in the Lord, everything else will fall in place. God will give you peace. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else to be added unto us. A lot of people are seeking things and stuff. And things and stuff are good, but things and stuff don't satisfy. Uh -huh. You're right. Only the Lord satisfies. If you know the only Lord satisfies, give my hand a praise. Amen. So if we're talking about seeking the Lord, I want you to, I want, I want us to seek the Lord, yes, but I want you to seek God for your life. Amen. Say, seek God, seek God for, my life. for my life. When you need direction, when you need answers, you seek the Lord. Amen. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Any answer you need to know, God will give it to you. Amen. Through prayer, through study of the word, 
through being in a, an anointed service, maybe a word of wisdom, word of knowledge may come forth. But I'm telling you, there's enough of God's word for him to speak to every issue and every question in our life. Amen. 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 So I don't want us just to be so spiritual as, as seeking the Lord, but seeking the Lord for our life. Yeah. What twists would you like me to make? What turns would you like me to take? What what's get out my spiritual sense? What do I need to cut off? What do I need to stop? What's out of order in my life that I need to bring order to? What am I doing or what am I struggling with against God's word? And I just need to get that area right with God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand of praise. Amen. I said it earlier, but it's worth saying again. Number six is ministry. What God has called us to do. Everyone in this room and everyone watching, you're here for a reason. As I told you before, you're not here to work on a job 25 or 30 years and for somebody to give you a Timex watch on your feet, on your wrist, after you've worked 25, 30 years. No, you are all here by divine design. Amen. Even the things that you've gone through in life, the hurtful things, the shameful things, the things where you were just so low in your, in your spirit about. If you take those things, Romans 8, 28 says, and we know what you know, that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and to those that are called according to his first purpose. So even though the most uh, worst thing that has ever happened in your life, if you give it to God, he will work it and use it for his purpose and for his glory. Amen. 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 The worst Amen. thing, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. If you're not ashamed to talk about it, if you, if you, if you give it to God, God will use it. For his glory. Amen. Amen. So number six is ministry. What God has called you to do. Uh, in the earth. All of you are called to do something in the earth. Amen. Yes. We're all called to make a difference. We're all called to make an impact. So under ministry. Uh, a. I put reaching more people. What does God want you to do to reach more people? B. What does God want you to do to help more people? And C. What does God want you to do to love on more people? God loves people. You cannot be in ministry and love the Lord and not love people. Because God loves people. God healed people. It's all about people. And that's why we need to really have, be filled with God's love before we do any type of ministry. Because the same power that you have to help people is the same power that you can do to hurt people. And God doesn't want his people hurt. So. One of our, our biggest prayers we need to pray is, Lord, fill me with your love. And if you're not filled with God's love and you're doing ministry, take yeah. some time out for yourself. I'll put you in time out. Yeah. Let's say time out. Time out. Time yeah. Out. Yeah. You don't want you don't want to you don't want to hurt. God loves people. Yep. And when and when you know yep. every race, every creed, every nation, he loves people. Amen. So we want to focus on, on what God has called us to do. Number seven, I put we want to seek him in our sins and shortcomings. The word says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Thank God for 1 John 1, 9 that says if we confess our sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Whatever God highlights, Holy Spirit highlights to get it right. It could be something small. It could just be maybe you fuss and cuss too much. I'm not going to look up. <laughs> I ain't going to look up. I'm going to just look at my notes. I ain't going to even look out. But the Holy Spirit, say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will convict you. And Amen. say, you don't need to be fussing and cussing. And you, you're trying to be a light to people around you and they hear you cussing and fuss. And God, can for, he forgives all of it. He, know, he knows our weaknesses and shortcomings. And I'm not saying it to condemn you. I'm saying it so we can get it right, so we can let our Amen. light shine. The word says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. So maybe we need to yield our tongues to God and say, God, take my tongue. Or maybe we ain't fussing and cussing, but we still we still got to have the last word. Right. Amen. 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 So, you know, seek God in the areas of your sins and shortcomings. And, and one thing about God, even with our sins and shortcomings, he's so gracious to us. Yeah. He's so long suffering. He's so gentle. He's so kind and slow to anger. Say slow to anger. Slow to anger. Hallelujah. Amen. Healing, physical and emotional. Number eight. Healing, uh, physical and emotional. Emotional. As it may, like I said earlier, maybe someone we need to disassociate from. Maybe you're around someone or in a fellowship with someone that's not healthy for you. In 2024, we want to make healthy choices. Say, make healthy choices. Make healthy me choices. personally, I'd rather be by myself than to be around something that's not good for me. Something or Amen. someone. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Number nine. I wrote, I wrote here, make healthy choices physically and emotionally. Some people can be draining. Some people can use you. Some, you know. So in 20, let's, let's make some better choices. And like I said last week, a healthy word to say is a two-letter word is no. They'll say, oh, I don't want to say no, I don't want to hurt their feelings. Then when it's time for you to do something you don't really want to do, then you fussing uh -huh. and mumbling and complaining. When well, you should have just said no from the giddy up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Now somebody, you done told somebody, oh, I'm going to do so. so like, oh, I don't feel like this. Now you done You're messed right. your blessing up. Because now you're murmuring and complaining and sighing and right. huffing and puffing. Just say no. If you can't do it, just say no. Say you can't do it. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Amen. It's very free. Yeah. Yep. Sometimes you juggle, sometimes you have a lot on your plate. Sometimes you juggle a lot. I remember last year somebody was going through something and they wanted, I gave them the information I could give them. And then they, someone asked them, they said, well, do you want to do, they said, well, do you, you want, they said, you want me to give you the, the person number and you can, I said, uh -uh, no. I said, I got enough on my plate. This is, you have to say it. That's right. Amen. Because you, if you have enough on your plate, and then you've got somebody else with, that, with a full plate. It's just too much. Yep. Yep. I said, no, this is what I have. This is who could possibly try this, try this, try that. Well, do you want to talk to the person? No, I sure don't. I don't want to. No, no, I, I got enough. But you said, yep. mm -hmm. amen. So don't be afraid to say yep. no. Yep. Don't be afraid to say I can't. Don't be afraid to say not at this time. Because you don't, it's a new year. Don't go on overload. Say overload. Overload. And we can all go on overload because sometimes we. I'm telling you, it was just something yesterday. I was uh, getting a, I was going to get my pedicure and manicure yesterday, Ooh. trying to keep myself groomed. And <laughs> my regular person wasn't there, so then the other girl who was there, I've seen her a lot of like her, her spirit was so sweet. So she was, uh, she did my feet, and then I was going. Then they tried to hand me off to somebody else with my hands. You know, oh, like I said, uh, no, I want her. I said, no, I, I want that. You know, the same one. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? And somebody, somebody else would have been afraid to say, oh, you know, I don't want, right. I don't want to say no. And then when you go there, then they mess up, then you be like, yeah, you, know. you should have said no for you. Yeah, because people will do things, but people do what you. And then, unless it was a, unless it's a, a freebie, if you paying, you get who That's you want. Right. I said no. I said this girl to myself. I said no. Her spirit is good. I said no. And this one, oh, sit here. I was like, no. <laughs> sure. I wasn't me, but I'm I'm saying it to say sure. you got to speak up for yourself. Yep. Just because somebody said this is what you got to do, if that ain't what you feel in your spirit, don't do uh -huh. it. Amen. All across the board. Oh, I'm gonna sign you up, Stephanie. I'm gonna let you come next week and be a volunteer. No, uh, no. no sir. <laughs> oh, I'm Doris. If you get yeah, Dar, oh, you, oh, Doris, you ain't working. I can put you. I got you. Can come five days next week and just answer the phone. No. <laughs> no. No. And no. I mean, if you can help, help. But I'm saying, don't let people overload you. Don't let people uh, coerce you into their stuff. Don't don't be such a yes person that you you like. Oh my God, I gotta go here for five days. I don't want to do it. You, you gotta speak up. Uh -huh. I don't know who that's for, but whoever that's just think it. Yeah. Amen. Just speak up. But sometimes we and then we just do stuff uh -huh. to be nice. I want yep. even if it's for me. If you can't do it, that's for this time you can't do it. I'll go to Plan B. <laughs> Cause let me tell you something. There's always a plan B, C, and D. Amen. And like I said, I think I said last Sunday, people will figure it out. Yeah, true that. That's true. People will figure it out. Amen. If we pass, if we pass away tonight, people will figure it out, and life goes on. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. <laughs> Two more numbers for tonight. Number nine: As we seek the Lord, draw closer. Draw closer to God. The worst is if you draw close to God, he will draw close to you. We draw close to him by prayer, by the word, by come. Oh, this is so good. By coming and being faithful to the house of God. Let me say it again for those in the back. By coming and being faithful to the house of God. Yep. I believe if you love God, you should be faithful to the house of God. Amen. Boy, it sure got quiet in here. Yeah, no, amen. Amen. And not just not just faithful, uh, oh, I'll go to that one. But, you know, faithful, because we need community. We need each other. That's 
That's right, Iron sharpens iron. We grow yeah. together. We pray together. We laugh together. We cry together. We, we fight together. Amen? So it, it shouldn't be hard for you to, to be where you're supposed to be on Saturday night if this is where God has called you to be. Amen? Amen. So let's draw closer because we draw closer. How many times have we all not felt like coming to church but we press our way and when, when we leave we feel so much better because we're in his presence. Amen. Amen. That's true. Hallelujah. So by a drawing, number nine is drawing closer to God through prayer, through the word, from coming and being faithful to the house of God, which is community. Somebody say community. Community. Amen. And number 10, which we don't want to hear a lot about, but I'm going to say it anyway, because I know that this is the key to being blessed, and it's giving financially. Uh, giving. Amen. Somebody say giving. Giving. And when I say giving, I'm not just saying giving in the church. I'm talking about giving kingdom. Say kingdom. Kingdom. We give outside the church. We, Of course, we support the local ministry, because let me tell you something. A lot of people fight. A lot of people fight. And it, it's, it's just a part of ignorance. A lot of people fight finances in the church. But everywhere you go, you need finances. Yep. Let me just let that sink in. It's true. Ah, they preach in prosperity. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a that's false teaching. They're preaching about money. Yep. Everybody say balance. Balance. How many people went to the store today because they knew it was going to be snowing? You went to the store today or yesterday? Oh, yeah, I've seen the answer. If you, didn't, if you didn't have a debit card or cash, did you go in there and say, oh, Jesus, drop the charges. Jesus, <laughs> drop the charges. Jesus, Jesus paid it all. Oh, my gosh. He paid it all. So you just come and stroll through ShopRite, get what you want, and roll out the door. You will have a prison ministry. Amen. Quickly. If you don't have a gift card or a debit card or cash, you are not leaving out of these of the store. Every place that you live, anybody here? Let me just see. Anybody living here rent free or mortgage free? Not yet. Okay, I don't see no hands up. So you need money to pay for an apartment or your house or your taxes and all that. You need money for lights. Uh, everybody, anybody here? Your cell phone off tonight? No, not one. No, not one. Everybody gonna pay that phone bill. Oh, I, I, I don't need my phone. I, don't, I ain't gotta have my phone. Phones are on. Everything we do, Tamala, we need finances to make it. It's true. No matter how much I love this great room, uh -huh. no matter how much I love being here at Calvary, no matter how much I love Pastor Clem and all them, they're not saying, oh, Pastor Mark, you're just so wonderful and anointed. You just come and stay as long as you want. Right. I'm not paying. I'm not paying Pastor Clem. This belongs. This is not Pastor Clem. This belongs to the Lord. Right, right, right. That's out of balance. Yep. I will be on the outside looking in. Yep. So what happens is, people, and I know that people have. I'm not talking about. I'm not. I know people have falsely used, you know, prophetic lines and mm. gimmicks. Uh, the Lord said. Ten people are gonna give me a, should give an offering of ten thousand dollars, and five people should give. I know all that's out of around. I don't see it at all. But I'm not talking. I'm talking about people that are true blue people mm -hmm. that want to see the church make it, that want to see their members make it. I'm I'm teaching you from a balanced standpoint that if you're gonna go anywhere in life, you have to have finances. Amen. Amen. People talk about oh the healing. That's a healing church. Are we? You know healing. Let me tell you, if you if you don't believe in healing, when you're sick, don't go to the doctor. Right. When you're Amen. sick, don't take medicine. Amen. Yep. 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 All right. Yeah. It's a balance. Yep. We need we we, we we thank God for we don't discredit doctors. We thank God for doctors. We thank God for medications. But it's it's all about a balance. Yep. And I'm saying that to say even giving, it's a financial. It's a principle. It says if you give, it will be. If you, even if you don't want to use that scripture, it says if you sow sparingly, uh -huh. New Testament, what is how are you going to reap? Sparingly. If you sow bountifully, what's going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. And somebody was saying a lot of people want finance, believe in God for finances, but won't sow finances. Amen. They want big, oh, I believe in God. You won't even sow. You got to sow. It's like you believe in God for vegetables in your backyard, but you ain't never put no vegetables in there. Mm -hmm. 
And it's not about the money, it's about the heart. But I'm, I'm, I'm overall saying that as we seek the Lord with our giving and not just giving here, but sowing into people's lives, being a blessing to someone, gifting someone, whatever God tells you to do, it takes finances. Amen. To go to college, it takes finances. Amen. To pay Amen. for college education, sure it, it takes, I, you know, it takes finances. Yep. So I don't want us to be ignorant in church and, you know, we give everybody else, you know, uh, well, whoever your phone carrier is today, say, oh, you got the next six months free. Yep. We hurry up and get that phone money in. So I want us, as we're going forward in God, you give as God leads you to do, but you give according to the word. Amen. Amen. You can't expect God to just bless you with finances and then you don't sow and give. And it's, and it's not about the amount. It's about, it's about your heart. When you love someone, Naturally, there's nothing that you wouldn't do for that person. There's nothing I wouldn't do, even though I'll be worn out in my, in my body. There's nothing I wouldn't do for Damien. There's nothing I wouldn't do for y'all in here if I could do it. So when you love someone, you, you, you're going to do for them. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Love does. Yep. You can't say, oh, I love you. I love, and never do nothing for nobody. Because yeah. actions speak louder than words. Oh, I love you. I love you. And you, you, you keep that wallet tight. And closed, mm -hmm. and you never open it up. No, that that's not God's. That's not God's best. Love. That's a good word. Say love does. Love does. Mm -hmm. Say love does. Love does. Amen. Amen. All right, I'm done for tonight. I just wanted to kind of give you a briefing on how we want to seek the Lord. I want. I want. I want to see. This is the first Saturday. Oh, this is good. This is the first Saturday of the year. I want, I want to challenge you. I want to see how your life is, Lord willing, by the end of this year. How is my life? Is my life better? Am I drawing closer to God? Am I pursuing his will for my life? Are my children better? Am I still carrying burdens and problems and stuff that I should have cast upon the Lord? Amen? Yeah. So I challenge you as we seek the Lord this year, as we seek him through prayer times and as we seek through the word, I want you to seek God for yourself. Let me tell you something. When God tells you something, you got it. Amen. When God gives you a scripture, you got it. When God gives you a prophetic word and it bears witness with you, you got it. Amen. And I want to see us not, I'm not giving you 2024 hype. But that, that hype don't last. Nope. Oh, I'm eat right. I'm eat right. I'm getting rid of this. I ain't eating that. I ain't eating that. In the third week, you don't forget everything you said you weren't eating. Oh, I'm going to the gym. I'm going to work out three times a day. I'm going to work out three times. I'm just going to get, I'm going to give it all I got. I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it, I'm going to get up. Third week, you forgot that you said you was going to, and you forgot how to even spell gym. G-Y-M. So we don't need no hype. We don't need Christian hype. We don't need 2024 hype. We need to settle in and see what God is saying and work it out by his grace and by his mercy. In Jesus' name, we love you. Lord willing, we will be on tomorrow morning at 7.55 a.m. Let's give our audience a hand of praise. We off?